hate their anti-gay bigots. Scott. Right-wing religious asshole bullying with pansy homophobic. Crazy bullshit in the Bible. <laughs> It gets better, so stick around, you stupid. You are not alone. You didn't do anything wrong. Things will get better. And that meant the President of the United States was telling queer kids, there's something wrong with your parents, there's something wrong with your preachers, right. there's something wrong with your teachers. And f those people. They're not hostile to religious people or belief or faith. Right wing guys, fundamentalist, conservative, evangelical, Christian, pieces of sh. The right wing religious fuckers beat the shit out of us. They have the bibble. They don't have logic. I am not an anti Christian bigot. Most of those people are very religious people who were spiritually abused. You know, they have bought into this idea that there is this higher power, that there is this Jesus Christ. I'm an atheist and a humanist. I wish they were all f***ing up. I wish they were all f***ing up. Carl Romanelli should be dragged behind a pickup truck until there's nothing left but the road. Any progressive who votes for a green anymore after Nader and now after Romanelli is a f***ing idiot and should be beaten with sticks. I don't know how you get to go from being sex advice columnist who traffics in like the skeeziest sex practices known to man to the gay go-to guy on cable news, but exactly. I somehow did it. Exactly, you're a pundit. I know. You're it's a total so pundit. I really do think that the Michelle Bachmans of the world and the Glenn Becks of the world are actively and consciously trying to get the president killed. Our children deserve the chance to learn and grow without constantly being picked on, made fun of, or worse. <laughs> We can learn to ignore the bullshit in the Bible. So you can tell the Bible guys in the hall, they can come back now because I'm done beating up the Bible. Kara Russo. Um, good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I wanted to sort of echo some of the things that the last two speakers had talked about. Um, uh, basically, I am offended by the blatant misrepresentation of Catholic teaching and Christian teaching that's been um, expelled by uh, many of the speakers. Um, it was said by a reverend um, about 15 minutes ago that uh, homosexual behavior is not a disorder but is blessed by God. It is a disorder. It is a sin. Not that other things aren't sins. Obviously, there's many things that are sins. But I think that we should all agree that something that is a sin should not be promoted and encouraged and uh, sanctioned by the state and actually taken and put up on a pedestal and glorified and put into law. And there are many reasons why it should not be. Um, there was somebody here from calling themselves something to the effect of Catholics for Choice. Um, are saying that they represent liberal Catholics. There really is no such thing as a liberal Catholic. The term is actually heretic, and I, I, I'm not saying that to be flip. Actually, in the Code of Canon Law, if you go completely against the, the very important tenets of the, of the Catholic faith, and there are you know, five non-negotiables in that, one of them is abortion, another is same-sex relationships, then you are in, uh, in heresy, you are a heretic of the Catholic faith. And th that same person had said, um, you know, they just want to focus on what unites us as Catholics, not what divides us. I say, why not just focus on the truth? Why not focus on what God actually says? Why not focus on what the faith actually is instead of thinking that you, who are not God, can redefine things to suit your preferences? What God does say very clearly, not just in the Old Testament in Leviticus, but several places, many places in the New Testament, like in Romans, said, he says, Therefore, God handed them over to degrading passions. Their females exchanged natural relations for unnatural, meaning same-sex relationships. And the males likewise gave up natural relations with females and burned with lust for one another. Males full things with males and thus received in their own persons the due penalty for their perversity. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God handed them over to their undiscerning mind to do what is improper. Why would we want to encourage something like that? You know, this hurts the people who are involved. 
the people that have the same sex attractions. You're not encouraging something that is healthy. In fact, the Center for Disease Control shows that men who have sex with men have up to an 86 times higher rate of HIV and AIDS. Any way you look at it, it's something that's not healthy for society. It's not healthy for them. It's not healthy for our, our economy, if you're looking at it in that way. We, were, uh, we got here a little bit late, but I'm sure that people came up here and said this will be an economic boom to the state. In fact, in Massachusetts, where they um, legalized same-sex marriage, their health costs Ms. Russo, skyrocketed me. afterwards. Um, 1 Corinthians 6.9. Do you not know that the unjust will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor boy prostitutes, nor sodomites will inherit the, the kingdom of God. Somebody had just said, um, they don't pretend to know, the person from Catholics Church, they don't pretend to know what God's will is. I'm just clarifying it, because obviously they've been given the wrong information. Jude 1, 7, Likewise, Sodom, Gomorrah, and the surrounding towns, which in the same manner as they indulged in se sexual promiscuity and practiced unnatural vice, he's talking about same-sex relationships, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of internal fire. Now, I know that the Bible is being mocked, and Joanne had brought this up, Dan Savage, recently, who's a uh, LGBT um, sex talk person, um, recently said, we don't have to believe the BS, and he said the full you know, swear word, of the Bible. And he talked to a whole group of journalism students and then said, um, you know, all slanderous, anti-Catholic bigotry things. And when the Catholic students in tears left in protest, he called them pansies. Now, this kind of thing would never be accepted by, on our side, people need to understand, those watching this, that an agenda behind all of this is to force the acceptance and, and, and legitimization of homosexual behavior under penalty of law, so that if you don't agree with it, if you dare to stand up for your own religion and your own freedom of religious expression, then you will be fined, you will be fired or Ms. arrested. Ms. Russo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Young. Yes, hi. Um, I would hope that you could ask the people behind me to stop hissing because I don't think that that's appropriate. While we're giving our speeches, where you've allowed the majority of this room to be filled with same-sex marriage advocates, you can see that the hallway is filled with people who are uh, against same-sex marriage, but this room has been occupied by these people. I don't think it's acceptable that they're hissing in the background. I don't think that that is representative of a democracy or a republic in any way. So I, I brought up in the past the lack of uh, monogamy among homosexuals. These are statistics by the Center for Disease Control. They have a, a relationship commitment problem. Their relationships continually break up, according to from the Center for Disease Control. Um, they, they don't produce children. They adopt children, but a small percentage of them adopt children. So this affects population. Um, the health risks involved as well, they have a high rate of AIDS and HIV. This directly affects our economy. When you have a decrease in population due to this type of behavior, men who have sex with men don't produce children. Men who have sex with men have an 86 times higher rate of AIDS and HIV. So they die. That has a decrease of our population in the United States. Now the problem with decreasing population is it has an economic effect on the United States economy. Now, believe it or not, there's an agenda behind these issues. Um, and it's very difficult to understand, but uh, I'm going to bring the issue forward. Um, throughout history, our country has been attacked. It's been attacked by communists. The unions have been controlled by communists. So I don't really support, I don't really um, a question why the union leadership would support this, because I believe the unions are really run by communists. This is a quote from Joseph Stalin. Um, he stated, America is like a healthy body. Its resistance is threefold. It's patriotism, it's morality, and it's spiritual life. If we can un these three areas, America will collapse from within. So the destruction of morality in a society is a goal promoted by a communist fascist leader who killed millions of people. The agenda behind the promotion of homosexuality is a depopulation program, an economic destabilization program. It's the promotion of the collapse of morality in the United States to promote communism. And that's the real effect behind this. There's an agenda in the world today, a global agenda to promote atheistic communism. I was in Woonsocket today. Thousands of people turned out in support of keeping the cross, keeping our religious beliefs in the public square. But one of the agendas of the ACLU that was started by Roger Baldwin, a communist, was the specific agenda to promote communism and remove religion from the public square. This is an attack on religion. The promotion of something that you can allow the suit of, of churches by removing 
exemptions, the, the church's properties then become subject to, to civil liability. And this is an, a direct attack on the church. This is a, a direct attack on the United States. This is the Russian army trained in the United States right now under the National Defense Authorization Act to arrest Americans that they classify as terrorists. People who are pro-life are classified as terrorists now. People who speak against same-sex marriage are classified as terrorists. These, these troops are training to arrest American citizens within our country. Our country has been given over to communists. The unions are run by communists. The legislators take bribes from communists in the form of campaign contributions. And this is a fact of reality. But what is the cost of communism? In China, the people, if a woman has a second child in China, the woman's thrown in jail. The second child is killed. The people there, they work for 35 cents an hour. They would rather die than work for that much money. They jump off the buildings. And they, the factories literally put nets around the building to, to catch the people. And they put them right back to work. This is the effect Mr. of communism. Mr. Mr. Young? The, this is the effect of communism. Or two more. Right. This is the effect of communism. Concentration camps where the homosexuals were persecuted once these fascist regimes gained power. These people are being manipulated to establish a communistic government so that eventually they will be persecuted. This is the issue that needs to be addressed. We need to maintain morality in society. We need to maintain the religious structure in society because it was taught through the Frankfurt School in Nazi Germany that if you could deconstruct religion, family, and population, you can take over a country. I'm reminded of the scripture that declares, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. One of the most popular of our presidents, President Lincoln, made reference to that in one of his speeches. If we are to continue to be blessed, we must uphold the moral principles this nation was built on. To be against sinful practices such as homosexual behavior is not to hate people but to be against that which is displeasing to God and destroys lives. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Patrick Crowley from NEA, Rhode Island. Uh, I've also submitted a letter from our uh, president of our state association, Larry Pirtle, for um, your review. But we're proud to stand here with our uh, brothers and sisters from the LGBTQ community uh, to pass marriage equality. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. On behalf of the Rhode Island AFL-CIO, we are here to support the marriage equality bill. Uh, Maureen Martin from the Rhode Island Federation of Teachers and Health Professionals. Um, as my brothers have talked about the labor law in our alliance here with uh, the gay and lesbian community, my national union, the American Federation of Teachers, has partnered with an organization called GLSEN, the Gay Lesbian Education Network. My national union, the American Federation of Teachers, has partnered with an organization called GLSEN, the Gay Lesbian Education Network.